Hallelujah. Come on and clap those hands right there. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you now and tonight. God, we give you glory and we give you praise, God. God, we bless your high name, God. God, we back. Oh, God, we lift you up on tonight. Oh, God, we glorify you, God. We thank you, God, for all that you have done, what you're doing and what you're going to do. God, we say thank you on tonight. Now, God, we pray that every bow down head be lifted. God, we pray that every discouraged heart be encouraged. And God, someone say, what must I do to be saved? In the name of Jesus, we do pray. And we count that done. Amen and amen. Come on and clap your hands for God one more time. Come on and clap them, clap them, clap them. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Well, we give God all of the glory and all of the honor. Amen. Because we know it certainly belongs to him. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the temple on tonight. Amen. We thank God for this opportunity. We thank God. Amen. For being here on tonight. Isn't he awesome? Isn't he an awesome God? Amen. I love him because he's so consistent. Amen in my life. I give honor on tonight certainly to Pastor Sosbury. Amen. The set man of this house. Amen. The shepherd. Come on, you can do better than that. Amen. I want you to just clap them until you see some blood that's red inside of your hands. <laughs> amen. And certainly to Lady Cheryl. Amen. Uh, Lady Sosbury. We love her. Thank God for you on tonight. And to all of the officers, everyone here on tonight, Greater Faith Outreach Ministries, we love you and appreciate you. Amen. On tonight. Certainly to my husband, Pastor Pepiner. Amen. Uh, the founder and pastor of Holy Nation Church of Memphis. We thank God for him. Amen. I give him uh, 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 much respect on tonight. Amen. And I tell him everywhere I go, he is a fine hunk of a specimen and a product of my intelligent choice. Amen. So I thank God for him on tonight. I thank God for my big brother. Amen. A smile come to my face every time. I say it. Amen. My big brother Samuel Phillips Jr., Deacon Samuel Phillips Jr. is here. He and his wife, amen, his lovely wife, Sister Esther, we thank God for you. And my mother is watching on tonight. I want to say amen, amen. Hello to my mother, Mother Lindsay L. Phillips, on tonight. And God bless each and every one of you on tonight. To these very fine musicians over here. Amen, amen. I just wanted you to drop off over in some. You know, I can move a little bit for the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. I truly enjoyed the praise and worship on tonight. And just everyone here on tonight, we are going to be looking at 2 Kings, the 6th chapter, verses 4 through 7. Amen. I, while I'm talking, so you can be getting that. Uh, uh, but that is 2 Kings, chapter 6, 4 through 7. Amen. We just honor God on tonight. We're going to go hurriedly to the word of God. Amen. And we are going to be out of your way. If you would stand for the reading of the word. As we read the word on tonight, 2 Kings 6, 4 through 7, and it reads, So he went with them, and they went to the Jordan and began to cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Oh no, my Lord, he cried out. It was borrowed. The man of God asked, where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elijah cut a stick and threw it there and made the iron float. Lift it out of the water, he said. Then the man reached out his hand and took it. Verse 5 again says, as one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water. Amen. You may be seated. We see here in the text that the man was cutting a tree. He was cutting. He was doing his work. He was taking care of his business. And suddenly he lost what was working for him. He lost what he was working with. He lost what he was cutting with. Amen. And so for a few minutes on tonight, we're going to talk about don't lose your cutting edge. 
Don't lose your cutting edge. Amen. Just like these musicians over here playing and doing all what they're doing. Amen. They're at their peak. They're doing what they do. They're on point. They're doing what they do. Amen. Our cutting edge. When we think about cutting edge, we think about when we are at the most advantaged position in our life. When we're at the peak of what we're doing, when we're prepared and we know that we are prepared and not only that, but we have the faith and the courage to do what we have been prepared to do. You know, in life, we have talkers and we have a whole lot of people. We have thinkers. We have brain busters. We have people that come up with the top 10 ways, best ways to do something. We have brainstormers. But what about those that do the walking? What about those that are prepared to step out on what they know? Those who have courage to step out on the edge. Uh-huh, on the edge. You know, when you're on the edge of something, you can't really see sometimes what is in front of you because you just might be looking down. You know, you don't know what. When you're on the edge of something, you really have to trust and put your faith in the Lord. So, 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 we have to know where our cutting edge is and say, listen, I'm ready for this. God has prepared me for this time. You know, it don't do you any good if you go to school all of your life. You have four masters, you have three doctorate and all of that, but you never take time out to apply what you have learned. So the thing about it is we need to know where our cutting edge really is. And uh, so, you know, so oftentimes people say, oh, they're on point. Or they'll say, you know, they're sharp as a tack. Or they might say, oh, they're so keen. In other words, all of your knowledge, all of your preparation have come to a point. It has come to a head. And then we ask God to give us wisdom on the know-how. How to, when to, who to say it to, where to say it, what time to say it, how much to say, when to stop talking, when to begin to talk. We ask God to give us all of the wisdom we need to apply what we know at our cutting edge. So when we think about God, God and the work he has placed in us, we want to be on point. Amen. You don't have to touch your neighbor. Just say it out loud. I want to be on point. Yeah, 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 yeah. We want to be on point. We want our ax head to be sharp so we can uh, cut away hatred and, and replace it with love and cut away discouragement and replace it with encouragement and cut away confusion and replace it with peace. And the list goes on and on. We as Christians work in the service of the Lord. We work, we work, we work. And the thing about it is our cutting edge, we have to be careful not to lose it. When we decide to watch others and, and say, well, you know what, I'm going to take a seat and I'm just going to let them do it this time. And, you know, when we decide to put uh, God on pause or when we say, God, you gave me an assignment, but I think I'll do it next year. You know, we put God on pause. Then we're losing our cutting edge. I have a sister, Dorothy, and she said like this, hold, please. And so my thing about it is we don't ever want to tell God, hold, please. You know, if we are in that position in our lives, we say we need revival. Yes, we surely need revival at that time. I know, I know, I know revival is for the lost. I know it's for the people that don't believe in God and want to be saved. I know it's for the downtrodden. But listen, if you have put God on hold, on hold in your life, then listen, the revival is for us. The revival is for us because sometimes we need a shaking. Sometimes we need a stirring. We need to renew our attention and replace it on God. So we need a shaking and we need a stirring. Second Timothy 1, 6 through 7 says, Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is through the laying on of hands. Amen. So we have to stir it up. You know, I'm not talking about get one of them little plastic spoons where it melts. I'm not talking about get a teaspoon or a tablespoon. I meant to bring my spoons tonight, but I forgot them. I'm talking about getting one of those big spoons you put way down in the pot and you have to stir it up, stir it up because there is a gift on the inside of you 
And if you're not working in the kingdom and doing what God has called you to do, oh my God, well then we need to stir it up. We must work to stay sharp. We must work to stay on point, to stay on target, to stay focused. You know, it's a lot going on that can distract us and pull us away. But we must work to focus. Just like we work on our bodies. You all know that's in here. Amen. If there's something going on, sometimes we run into the gym. We run in here and there. It's somebody in the house uh, that can agree with me that we used to could, you know, run 100 yard dash in 10 seconds flat. But now we don't even want to walk to the corner. We, we know, we know it's somebody in here that can agree with me that, uh, you know, we can run up a flight of stairs, but now say, oh, I need to get to the second floor. I need every elevator I can to get there. Somebody's in that point. You know, I know myself, somebody can say, oh, I remember a time when I didn't need glasses at all. But now with my glasses, I'm trying to yet see what does that letter look like? I, I, listen, really, let, let's go back to Mississippi. You know, back in the day, I could crack a pecan with my teeth. Oh, yes, I could. Yes, I could. Yes, I could. But now you have to get your glasses out of your teeth out of glass just to crack a smile. You know, you, I'm telling you, there are some things, there are some changes going on in our life. There are seasons that change. We don't want to wear coats in the summertime. We don't want to wear short sleeves in the wintertime. What are you saying, Shirley? We need to be prepared. For the seasons that are coming in our life. We need to be sharp and on point. We need to have our axe head sharpened. Uh, Matthew 24 and 35 says, heaven and earth shall pass away. But God's word will never pass away. Things going to change. Uh-huh. But his word will never change. Here, 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 here. Here in the text, it focus on one of the noted miracles performed by prophet Elijah. Elijah received Elijah mantle, the blessings and double anointing. In this passage of scripture, it's telling, about, telling us about the young student who studied under Elijah in seminary. And they wanted more space and wanted to build a dormitory. And they asked Elijah if they could go down by the Jordan River because there were many trees in this area. And Elijah agreed. The young prophet, uh, prophet was instructed to cut down a tree for the construction of the building. The student asked Elijah to go with them as they were working and cutting the trees down. One of the student's iron axe head flew off the handle and the axe he had, and he said the axe was borrowed, but it fell into the Jordan River. Elijah asked him, where did it fall? And the youth showed him the place, and Elijah cut a stick and threw it in the water, and the axe head began to float. Elijah told the student to reach out and grab it. And, and that just blessed my heart right there when he told him to reach out. Because oftentimes we have a lot of things drowning in our lives. A lot of things going down and we can't see it and it's going out of sight. Things that we need to be doing. Things that we had on the burner to do. And it's going, it's floating away. We can't see it. But, but the man of God, the prophet said, reach out and grab it. Reach out and grab it. And so oftentimes we have to, listen, we got to do something. Sitting down is not going to get it. And we can pray and nothing wrong with praying. But there come a time when you have to get up and reach out and grab it. Whatever that is. And so, so on tonight, let us observe two points from this passage of scripture, from this text. Let us take out two points. If we don't remember anything else. Number one is that the axe was borrowed. The axe was borrowed. When we borrow things that belong to somebody else, you know, have you ever done it? You borrow something and you take better care of it than you take care of your stuff. Because you want, it, want to return in some kind of way. You want it to be in a certain order when it go back. 
Uh, but sometimes we are uh, loan things or you borrowed some things out and it's, it never come back to you. It's never returned to you. And then if sometime it come back, it's, it's in such bad shape until you say, you know what? I, I just can't even use this anymore because they made such a mess of it. I, I, you know, they just made a mess of it. I cannot use this anymore. But we must remember. We must remember our lives are in the hands of God. We are, li we are living a life that is borrowed from him. And so when we start talking about this borrowed act, we're living a life that's borrowed from God. We need to realize that all we have is by the grace of God. Everything we have belongs to him. We are simply stewards taking care of what belongs to God. Our abilities, our gifts, our talents, our time, the anointing that God has placed in your life. And let me talk about your anointing for a minute. I know people say, oh, they just anointed to do this. Oh, they just so anointed. And listen, you, God has anointed each and every one of us in here to do something. And you need to guard and protect your anointing. All you musicians over here, I love musicians because my husband won. And you need to know that God has gifted you for such a time as this. I know you think it's an accident that you're sitting up in here on tonight. Oh, no, but God has anointed you. And you need to guard your anointing because the enemy is coming against it. Ah, God, your anointing. Uh, it don't belong to us. It belongs to God. It's a gift to be given away for the furthering of the ministry, to encourage the discouraged, to mentor some child, to show love to the lonely. If we're not using what the Lord has loaned us in the proper way, if we're not sharing, teaching, and showing compassion, being a witness, reaching for our destiny, oh, being who you are, and not worrying about trying to be somebody else, get comfortable in your own skin. Know who you are. God, listen, don't take half of your life to discover I'm going to be who I am, but be who you are. Then our axe head when it has fallen off. When our axe head, the axe head fall off, our axe head uh, be might become loose. Sometimes it'll fall off because it's become loose. And, and, and you know, you can't hit a target with a loose axe head. I mean, the axe head may have them fallen off yet, but if it's sliding up and down, if you're trying to hit a piece of wood, it's going to be pretty hard. If your axe head is loose in the spirit, you won't know how to respond when the axe head meet oppositions and trials and tribulations. You won't know how to act when, it, when, when, when there's work to do. You won't know how to cut your tree down. Because, listen, everybody got a tree. Everybody have a tree. You won't know how to cut your tree down. You all over here trying to cut somebody else's tree down. You over here trying to cut Donald's tree down. Uh, you want to cut somebody else's tree down. You need to be working on your own tree. Because listen, when you cutting a tree, you know when people cut a tree, they watching how it's going to fall, which way it's going to fall. You know, if you, they're they going to throw the tree a certain way so it won't come back and harm somebody. So it won't do something wrong. You need to be working on your own tree. Don't try to work on my tree because I got my own axe to keep sharp. I got my own chip away. I got my own time to be struggling and, and cutting on my tree. Oh, your tree. Watch out for your tree. Everybody got a tree. Much Jesus, Jesus had a tree. He was on the cross. Uh-huh. Must Jesus bear the cross alone? Matthew 16 and 24 says it's like this. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Oh, yeah. And then hymn book number, uh, the hymn, hymn number 459 in the blue hymn book says, Must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? Ah, do you remember this? I know you young people, y'all don't remember that. But I'm just saying, there is a hymn that says, uh, it asks the question, uh, it asks, uh, must Jesus bear the cross alone and all the world go free? And then the songwriter came back and said, no, 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 no. There's a cross for everyone. Don't think, young folk, don't think you just out here struggling. Listen, everybody had to struggle a little bit. Ah. Work on your tree. 
Get to chopping all around your tree. Make sure your axe blade is sharp. How you going to sharpen your blade, Shirley? We got to get in the word of God. Listen, we got to stand. If it's ever a time to stand, uh, we have to stand uh, on the word of God. Throw your tree the way you need to throw it. Uh, we must make sure we work daily to keep our axe head tight. In other words, keep our mind together. Keep our hearts in the right place. Speak words that build up and not tear down. Get our attitudes together. People don't know whether to speak to you or run. They don't know what's going on with you. What's going on? It's a day or night in your life. What is really going on with you? Is your gun loaded? I mean, is, you got, is it cocked? Is it trigger pulled back? And you want to excuse me, shotgun. I didn't know you were loaded. I, you know, you don't know what's going on with the people. Get your attitude together. In check. It takes, oh, do it take work? Yes, it does. Chop on your tree. Chop on your tree. People don't know what to do. Tighten up your axe head. An axe head does not come loose all at once. Uh-uh, it takes time to wear and tear. In other words, the enemy will try to slip up on you. It's just like boiling water. Water just don't boil all at once. The enemy will try to slip up on you. But we must be on high alert. High alert. If we're not watching over a period of time, we, be, we can become too loose, too wavering, back and forth. And we just might fly off at any minute. Now, you don't want to be flying off anywhere. Have you seen somebody just flying off? Oh, I just got to say it. I, oh, honey, I just must say it. I know, but it's just been in my spirit. And I am going to say it. I'm going to say it. You know, you don't flew off and you don't even know it. Oh, they're going to get bust in the head today. Yes, yes, you're just talking to yourself, telling yourself that. Oh, that's the, oh, I know they deserve a good cussing out. Oh, yes, they know they did wrong. And, and you just talking and telling yourself that. And then you say, oh, they're going to catch me on the wrong day one of these days. I'm just going to do it. You know, because that's the way we do it. That's the way we Wallamelon family. That's what we do. No, you're talking to yourself, telling yourself what you're going to do. Listen, you need some sharpening to that axe head and get to working on your tree. The axe head. Now, 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 now your axe head flew off. Hit somebody in the head. You don't hurt somebody all up in the church and everywhere. Your axe head flew off. Knocked somebody in the head. They bleed everywhere. Blood everywhere. Everywhere you got blood. Because you flew off. Because you flew off. Bleed. Just bleeding everywhere. Blood. Needing stitches. Because you bleed. Uh, Needing bandages. And the person that hit you upside the head with the axe looking at you like, why you bleed? What, what is wrong with you? Why you bleed? Listen. And you standing there waiting, thinking they're going to say, oh, I'm sorry. They, they, uh, oh, this and that. Listen, listen. If you are bleeding, call for help. And how do we do that? We call on the name of the Lord. Amen. And he will bring you out of every situation. All I want to tell you is that the axe head, amen, and the axe was borrowed. And then the second thing and the last thing, and I'm going to my seat, the axe was lost. It was lost. The axe head, it was lost. Even though the student was working and trying to do his best and take care of his responsibilities to cut down the tree, Something unexpected happened. His tool, his help, what he needed, his axe fell into the water and began to sink. What are you doing with your tool? What have God given you? We need, God has given us what we need to carry out our assignment. The word of God, our prayer life, fellowship testimonies one to another gifts and talents and callings all have been given to support to help to build to reflect God goodness the axe head was heavy and it began to sink just like our load sometimes in this world in this walk in this earthly realm our load get heavy sometimes and it seems like it's more than we can bear but God somebody say but God 
But God will let you look at a place where the axe head fell, where your head, axe head fell, and he will bring you through. You know, when the axe head went down into the water, it went down into the muck and the mar. You know, he couldn't see it or anything like that. Amen, amen. He couldn't see it or anything like that. And the water, the water that was there, it gave reflection. And, and God will let you go to your water place. He will let you go to your place where the water is, where you have something that has drowned and went to the bottom, and you will be able to see the reflection of your face. You'll be able to see the reflection of what you need. You'll be able to see the reflection of what God wants you to do. Ah, at the water, at the place where the axe head went down. Mm -hmm. No matter how heavy your axe, axe head is, it's not too heavy for God. God will pull you out of a muddy situation every time. Every hurt, every place of confusion, bitterness, God will bring you through. God will redeem the times for your sake. God, God will redeem the time. Listen, he'll change hearts and he'll break up every stony place. Psalms 40 and 2 says, he brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the mire clay, and set my feet up on a rock and established my goings. Uh, uh, listen, the scripture says, uh, I didn't say, but the scripture says, he brought me up out of a horrible pit, uh, out of the mire clay, and set my feet on a rock. Now, now you know, if your feet, uh, uh, if it's on a rock, uh, you don't have to worry about sinking anymore. You don't have to worry about the mud getting all in between your toes. And you don't have to worry about the water and getting wet. And you don't have to worry about drowning. And, and you can't find your way out. Uh, because God will. Uh, he'll bring you through every storm. Uh, he'll bring you through every situation. Uh, yes, he will. Yes, he will. Hey, Lord. Yes, he will. Right there, right there, God said, he'll bring you through. I hear him telling somebody he'll bring you through. I hear him saying he's going to bring you through. Uh-huh. Put it in his hand. Uh-huh. On every rock. Set your feet up on a rock. Yeah, you won't have to be worrying about sinking and going down and all that kind of stuff. And after he said he's going to set your feet on a rock, he said, what you say? He's going to establish my going. In other words, he's going to direct my steps. Every step I take, every move I make, oh, I'll be watching you. <laughs> Everywhere I go, God is going to watch you. Amen. He's going to direct your steps and order. All we have to do is lean and depend on him. That's all we got to do. We got to get our woe to fix. All we have to do is lean and rely on our God and our Savior because he is our way out of nowhere. He is our all in all. He is my redeemer. Can I talk about my God? Can I talk about who he is to me? God is. Um, he's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. He is. Uh, he's my portion. Uh, he is. Uh, he's my hope. Uh, he is excellent uh, in everything he do. Uh, he is. He is. Uh, he is the one uh, that is lovely all together. God is uh, a sure foundation. Uh, God is. Uh, he's a hiding place uh, from the winds of life. Uh, God is. Uh, he is my refuge. Uh, God is a uh, rock of ages. Uh, God is a uh, strength for the weak. Uh, God is uh, a light in dark places. Uh, God is uh, the everlasting father. God is my way in. And he's my way out. He's way my way through. When I can't get through, God will. He'll pull me through. End up, I say, thank you, Jesus. God is. God is. God is. Tell your neighbor. Just say, God is. Say it out loud. Say, God is. God is my all in all. God is my all in all. He is uh, my way through. Uh, God will take me uh, to where I need to go. And when things seem dull in my life, uh, hey, when things seem rough in my life, when the winds blow, 
know when the rains come, when tsunami tsunamis come, when the storms come, when tornadoes come, hey Lord, He will bring me through. Yes, He will. He keep on making a way. Keep on making a way out of no way. And no matter what you're going through, I stop by to tell you. It don't even matter what you're going through. God is so able. He's so willing to do what he needs to do. Put it in his hand. Put it all in his hand. Ah, put it in his hand. I'm not through, but I'm going to quit. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Walk with him. Talk with him. Yeah, hey, God. Come on and lift those hands and just say, God, keep me sharp. Keep me sharp. I want to cut on my tree. I want to work on my tree. I got to sharpen my axe so I can work on my tree. Hey, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, God. Hey, God, we thank you because we know that with God, with God, all things are possible. But let me tell you this. Let me just share this with you. You have to have faith. You have to have faith. Because we know without faith it's impossible to please the Lord. Amen, amen. To go through what we need to go through, we have to have faith. Elijah. Elijah went to the place where the axe fell, and I'm finished. Uh -huh. And he said, God is our help. And, and, and the young man didn't just walk around and say, well, my axe fell off, and I'm going over here to sit down. I'm not going to try to work. My, I don't have nothing to work with. I don't have nothing to work with. So what? I'm just going to go sit down. No. But he was in a hurry. He said, Master, he said, teacher, teacher, ah, oh, come help me. I need help. And somebody here today need help. Uh-huh. Uh, unspoken request. Things that we go through on a daily. And I know I think this women's night, I, I know about women, uh-huh, because I'm a woman. Uh-huh. Uh, I, I often say our job is never done. I, it might just be in our mind, but listen, <laughs> it's never done. Listen, we're praying. Why are we praying? Are we just doing something to just to be doing something? But no, we're praying because we know we have a Savior. Hey, that can turn it all around. Uh, it won't always be like this. See, 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 we can quit wishing for stuff and start expecting stuff. When you pray, you stop wishing and you start expecting. You start expecting. Uh, you might not see it. Uh, but now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Uh, uh, you might not see it. That's all right. You just know within your spirit it's coming. Uh-huh. Don't let the enemy cloud your mind and try to tell you you can't make it. Are we going through hard times? Yes! <laughs> We're going through some rough times down through here right now. But you know what? Nothing has caught God by surprise. Not one thing, not nothing. And we have to hold strong. We have to make sure our axe is sharp. Oh, yeah. Come on, clap those hands for the Lord. Clap those hands for the Lord. I, I, I want to say this in, in this lesson on tonight. The overall point is, that the man of God, the teacher, the prophet, needed help to be him. And the student was trying to carry out his assignment, trying to do the will of the Lord. Every person God has placed into the church needs to understand that he or she has been placed within the church to help ministry, to help build, and not to tear down. So stay sharp, stay keen, Keep your axe tight. Keep it tight. Keep stuff tight. Don't, uh, uh, don't let the devil, oh, uh, you in my space. I, I, all of this space belongs to me. I need you to move. This is my space.
peace. Bag up. Bag, you better bag up. Keep it tight. Keep your family tight. Keep it tight. Pray, 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 pray together. Uh, do something unusual. Shock them. We all going to sit down at the table and have dinner and have a real conversation. We're not going to be on the cell phones and all of that. Little Bobby, get yourself in here. Little Jojo, I need you to come on in here too. Keep it tight. Keep it together. Stay sharp. Oh, work on your assignment. And cut your tree now. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father God, now we thank you on tonight. God, we do give you glory and we give you honor on tonight. Ah, God, God, God. Hands are lifted everywhere. Hands are lifted. God, we thank you now. We thank you, God. God, we feel you in the room, God. We know, God, there's need in the room. Ah, God, God, meet us at the point of our need in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we're so thankful because you take such jealous care of us. So, God, we say thank you. For those that are watching out online, God, we pray for every home. God, we pray, we pray that the blood cover every home, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we pray for every situation. I don't know all situations. I don't know God, but you know. Touch now in the name of Jesus. Regulate, God. Someone need healing in the body, God. Someone need healing in the mind. God, we pray for human behavior everywhere. You see and you know what's going on down here, God. Oh, God, but you haven't left us, God. And we thank you for that, God. We thank you, God, that you keep on making ways out of no ways. <laughs> we thank you, God, because you keep on providing for us. <laughs> we thank you, God, uh, because you are the one, uh, oh, God, that bring us through every storm. Uh, and so, God, we say thank you, God. Uh, God, we pray for our children now. Uh, oh, God, we cover them with your blood. Uh, oh, God, you see this summer. Uh, you know what's going on. Uh, You bless here now huh? in the name of Jesus. Huh? Oh God, do it and it shall be done. Huh? Keep us and we shall be kept. Huh? Oh God, great King, our wonderful Savior. Hey, thank you for being a strong tower. Thank you for being our leaning post. Huh? Thank you for being a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Huh? Thank you, God, that you sit high and look low. Huh? Thank you, God, for all that you're doing. Huh? Thank you, God. Hey, hey. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we bless your high name. Come on and clap those hands right there. Love on our God. Love on our God. Love on our God. Love on our God. Love on our God.